Well, Janine, that ATV rider has been identified as 43-year-old Ricky Iglesias. In fact, a few people here in the neighborhood said that he often rides these roadways here in southwest Miami-Dade. But last night, he lost his life right here at the intersection when he was shot and killed. Well, Christy, many would say that Reverend Sims was a force to be reckoned with in the community. He first became known back in the 1980s during the race riots in Overtown. And now today, the community is coming together to remember all the work that he's done. Kind of difficult to see from this angle, but you are seeing some ponding on the roadway. And unfortunately, in some locations here, right on Lincoln Road, that water just stays there and stands. In fact, there are three major problem spots that have been reported with that mobile app. Coming up at 5 o'clock today, we'll have details on that app and how you can report a problem if you see it. We're live in Miami Beach, Constance Jones, Local 10 News. Yeah, she says she is over it and we are now inside the treehouse. And I got to tell you, it is pretty cool in here without a doubt. We do know in addition to the code violations, there's some issues. There are multiple people living on the property and this area has been zoned for single family living. Needless to say, Shawnee said she's going to fight this all the way. We're going to stay on top of this story as it continues to develop. She has 120 days to file for her appeal. Victor, back to you. Uh, we've been preparing for the last week for this amazing adventure. Of course, we're raising funds for the Miami Children's Initiative, but the big thing we're about to do in about 30 minutes is go over, over the, the edge. edge right? Yes, we're going over. Because I am definitely a little scared. Of course, there's a lot of safety precautions in place. We are fully ready and geared up, but we still need our yeah, training, training. Yeah. Uh, which is super important. But we're but they are going to be fine. Constance is fierce. Look at those muscles. She's good. She's concentrating. She is about to lower herself and uh, rappel down the side of a building. Brave girl right there. All in an effort to help Liberty City kids. She looks focused. Yep. She's there. Yep. Let's see what happens next. We're going to we just got the numbers confirmed a few moments ago. A total of 24 homes damaged in the city of Plantation and the most damaged area is this mobile home community back out here alive. You see this is a wooden door right here and we're told by the homeowner that thankfully it was a wooden door. Structural engineers came from the city of Homestead and they said that wooden door was just it just collapsed when that car came through. If it was a metal door, it probably would have caused more damage to the home. But the home's still standing and still safe for them to live in. Obviously, they do have to fix this mess out here, but they're happy that no one was seriously injured. We're live in Homestead. Constance Jones, Local 10 News. Right now at 530, we have new details on a deadly case of road rage in southwest Miami-Dade. Police say it started as a fight between a driver and a man riding an ATV. Officers say that driver shot and killed the ATV rider. And now we know both of their names. Local 10's Constance Jones is live with new information. Constance. Well, Janine, that ATV rider has been identified as 43-year-old Ricky Iglesias. In fact, a few people here in the neighborhood said that he often rides these roadways here in southwest Miami-Dade. But last night, he lost his life right here at the intersection when he was shot and killed. But neighbors say they're not surprised. It's very loud, uh, very destructive. It's a sight all too common here in southwest Miami-Dade in the Redland community. ATVs roaring throughout the neighborhood. They need to find a place to go right. I mean, there's no park. Residents like Aurelius Hayes says there's clearly hostility between riders and homeowners. At this point, it's not clear what caused the alleged gunman, 57-year-old Andres Diaz, to shoot and kill 43-year-old Ricky Iglesias. But police say Iglesias was riding an ATV. Detectives were called out to the intersection of Southwest 197th Avenue and 192nd Street Sunday night. That's where they found Iglesias with a gunshot wound. He later died from his injuries. Police say the shooting was likely the result of a road rage incident. Hayes says she's troubled by the news, but says tempers have been boiling over in this neighborhood. It's just sad and it's something that we kind of like predicted that it was going to happen because it has gone out of hand. Now, according to the police report, the gunman, 57 year old Andres Diaz, actually lives about 10 to 15 minutes away from here. But at this point, this is still an open investigation. We really don't know why he opened fire on Iglesias. At this point, he is not facing any charges. Live in Southwest Miami Dade, Constance Jones, Local 10 News. Treehouse trouble surrounding one free spirited grandmother in Northwest Miami Dade. She's been living outside in a home of her creation for decades, but now. County code enforcement says it's not safe and has to come down. Local 10's Constance Jones has her story. Welcome to Shawnee's paradise, a tropical oasis. 
This is where I swim when I'm hot. Taken straight from a page out of Swiss Family Robinson. Uh, uh, you're almost full. This quirky little habitat definitely has its charm. The centerpiece is the tree house nestled on top of an old oak. There's no windows. There's no, there's no screen. There's no windows. So do you sleep in the rain? I, well, I don't get wet. Shawnee Chasser has lived here for over a decade. This purple-haired grandmother says she's never had any issues until last year. Well, we looked online oh. yesterday. I didn't even know. And we found there was like $30,000 in violations and fines. And although this place is awfully cute, the stove, sink, plumbing, everything here is considered a violation. Is this a code violation? Or? Everything's a code violation. All of this is a code all violation. Of, all of it. She's already spent over $10,000 in fines and costs to update the property, but it's not enough. The county released a statement in part saying, quote, the treehouse under discussion and other structures on the property were not properly permitted or built to the standard of the Florida Building Code. Substandard construction and improperly running electricity and plumbing on the property present a hazard not only to those on the property, but also to neighbors. As for Chaster, she is prepared to fight the ruling. She's appealing the decision with her attorney. I basically spent the last year crying and being scared and and I'm over it. Yeah, she says she is over it and we are now inside the treehouse and I got to tell you, it is pretty cool in here without a doubt. We do know in addition to the code violations, there's some issues. There are multiple people living on the property and this area has been zoned for single family living. Needless to say, Shawnee said she's going to fight this all the way. We're going to stay on top of this story as it continues to develop. She has 120 days to file for her appeal. Victor, back to you.